Let's say we've got a particle of charge Q. This point is putting out an electric field, and at every point in space, we can calculate a potential energy, an electric potential there. So let's say that our point charge is at the origin of a three-dimensional system. Then we can describe that point as X, Y, Z. And then it's really easy to write down what this potential is. It's K times Q over R, where the K is just this nice constant that's known. And R is the distance from, it's the distance between the two points. So the distance between the charge and this point that we're looking at. The electric field is where this gets interesting because the electric field is minus the gradient of this electric potential. Electric field you may also know as electric field intensity. Um, if we think about the geometry of this electric field, one thing that we can think about is what will the surface curves, uh, I mean the, I'm sorry, the level curves of this electric potential be. So if we set the electric potential equal to a constant C, what will those curves look like, those surfaces look like? Um, that's interesting because we know that the, that the gradient of this potential function is going to give vectors that are normal to the surface. Um, so we want to think about that, but also we can think about this more easily without even writing down an equation. Uh, the gradient gives us the direction of greatest increase. And think about this potential function. You have a constant divided by the distance between the two points or the distance from the origin. So as that distance gets big, the electric potential goes down. As that distance r gets small, the electric potential goes up. The whole fraction gets larger. So we expect that the gradient of v would point straight down in toward the origin. That's the direction of greatest increase. And minus that would point directly away from the origin. So let's think about these surfaces. Um, we've got k times q over r equals some constant c. All of these are constants except for R. None of them depend on X, Y, or Z except R. So let's solve for R here. We get R is equal to this constant. So that's saying that for every point that has the same distance from the origin R, it has the same electric potential. And again, that makes sense based on the, uh, the actual electric potential function itself. So um, we, ex we have these spheres that are level surfaces, and then the electric field is going to give us vectors that point directly away from that, that are normal to the sphere. As you go out, these vectors are getting smaller and smaller. As you go in, they're getting larger and larger. They're all pointing out. We can calculate this thing as well. The gradient of V is just the partial derivative um, with respect to x and the x component, and then y and z and the y and z components. So let's, let's think about how we would actually calculate this. I'm going to rewrite the potential function like this. Um, I'm going to not write it in terms of r, I'm going to write it in terms of x, y, and z. And I'm going to write it to the negative one-half power because I'm going to take derivatives. So if we think about taking the partial derivative of this electric potential function with respect to x, the k times q can stay out in front. That's just a constant. And then we'll use the chain rule on that part in parentheses. Uh, I'm sorry, the part in parentheses raised to the power. So bring the negative one-half power down in front. Then you've got the stuff in parentheses raised to the minus one-half minus one. So that's negative three halves. And then you have to multiply that by the derivative of the inside, but the derivative is the partial derivative with respect to x. y and z are considered to be constants here, so that partial derivative is just 2 times x. And I've highlighted the x squared plus y squared plus z squared part here because that's r squared. r squared to the negative 3 halves power is just going to be r to the negative 3. So we'll have an r cubed in the denominator. And then the one-half 
times the two cancel out. So we've got this nice compact expression. That's for the partial derivative with respect to x. That's what goes in that x component. Um, notice the negative outside of the, notice the two negatives will cancel each other out. Also notice that if we take the partial derivative with respect to y or z, we'll get something very similar. The only difference will be that at the end we'll have a two times y or a two times z. So in the end, when you simplify all of this, that electric field is equal to positive kq over r cubed times the vector x, y, z. And then it's common to, to write this in a way where you can see the length of the vector times the unit vector pointing in this direction. So if you want to do that, x, y, z over the length of x, y, z is a unit vector. The length of x, y, z is r. So we can just rewrite it like this. You've got kq over r squared times the unit vector in that direction. That is the electric field.